Smartphones just keep getting larger and larger. I remember when a 4.5 inch display was considered huge and some even complained it was too hard to use or hold in the hand. Now it's the minimum screen size or even considered a compact phone. So what about Apple's new iPhone SE? When there were rumors flying around that Apple was gonna bring a brand new smaller iPhone to the market, I was actually really excited about it. And then when they announced it, of course, I was naturally disappointed because I think a lot of manufacturers are missing this important segment of the market. But of course, I had to go pick one of these up. I've been using it for a couple of weeks. So who is the SE4 and is it even worth buying? Basically, it boils down to this. The iPhone SE or Special Edition is basically the iPhone 6S guts stuffed into an old iPhone 5S body. So if you were to unbox this three-year-old iPhone 5S and the new SE together, you really wouldn't be able to tell them apart, even down to the accessories that you get with it. There are a few minor changes like the chamfered edges are now matte and finished, and the SE now comes in this brand new rose gold color, but that's literally it on the outside. Most people wouldn't even be able to tell them apart besides the SE badging on the back. So if rose gold isn't your color, then just give it that dbrand treatment like I did and make it look like this. It can definitely make your old design look brand new. I'm really digging this wood and leather look, so I'll leave a link down for you below if you wanna start customizing your SE. All the changes are on the inside. I mean, you get the same super fast Apple A9 chip, the same processor that's in the flagship iPhone 6S, and you even get two gigs of RAM. Heck, you get the amazing 12 megapixel camera too that is on the iPhone 6S. I mean, this thing looks like a dream on paper, and in some ways it is. I mean, the performance is buttery smooth, the A9 couple with the two gigs of RAM perform extremely well, and lag and starter are pretty much non-existent. I mean, you get the latest and greatest iOS version with modes like night mode and all of the features you either love or hate about iOS. Gaming is beautiful on this with smooth frame rates, and while it does get a little warm, it's nothing that will bother you. The 12 megapixel camera is for sure one of the best out there, and even though you don't get optical image stabilization, you get incredible images with great dynamic range, nice colors, and great detail. You also get 4K recording with this and no camera bump. Now don't get me wrong, I don't mind the design of the 5S. I think it's actually one of the better iPhone designs to this day. It's got that square design with metal and glass and it still feels like a premium phone today. And I must admit this phone is refreshing to hold because you can reach everything with one hand. It's easy to use, but if you are used to larger phones like I am, it just feels weird. I mean, the four inch display looks super small and content on it feels dated, especially if you're used to a higher resolution screen. But if you're coming from something really small or currently using something like an iPhone 4 or something like that, you may not mind. I mean, I would really like to see a resolution bump here. This is exactly the same screen as the 5S. Even though this is a decent phone, there's some things I don't like, and there's some things that just frankly wanna just make me scratch my head. Apple gives this thing a beast camera on the back, but leaves the potato 1.2 megapixel front facing camera. I don't get it. It just feels like a joke these days. There's more people taking selfies than ever right now, and this is not acceptable. Also, it still only records 720p video. That's just terrible. This is supposed to be the more affordable iPhone, and it is the cheapest iPhone that you can get into, but it's nowhere near budget. It starts at $399, and only with 16 gigabytes of internal storage. Hold on, let me check the date real quick. Yeah, this is 2016. No phone should come with 16 gigabytes of storage unless you have expandable storage options. Not acceptable, again. So basically, if you buy this phone, you need to buy the 64 gigabyte version, and then it's $500. So you're only about $150 away from the flagship iPhone success. Other weird things include the rehash of the first generation Touch ID sensor, but thank goodness there is NFC for Apple Pay in here. And basically, it gets a little bit bigger battery, pretty much the same size, but it does get better battery life. I mean, I was able to make it through a full day, and I was never able to do that with the 5S, so I guess that's a big plus. I mean, I do get it. It's a smart economical move for Apple to basically use the same shell and some leftover parts, but if they cared so much about a smaller iPhone, why didn't they just develop one? I really wish Apple would have redesigned this and really revolutionized this segment in the market, but before we write it off, I guess we really need to understand what the SE is. Personally, I believe this is an in-between for Apple even kind of like an experiment. They wanna see what kind of interest there is in smaller phones, even in today's market. I mean, they took an existing design, reused some old parts, threw in some new ones, and made kind of a Frankenstein mashup of an old favorite. 
if you absolutely need the smaller form factor with faster guts, then I guess this is not a bad choice. But I personally think it's not worth your money. I'm gonna release a separate video about this to supplement this review. It's kind of more like a rant to tell you how I really feel about Apple releasing this device. But spoiler, I think they were a little bit lazy with this one. So what do you guys think about the iPhone SE? Is it good? Is it crap? Are you gonna pick one up? I mean, let me know in the comment section below. I know this is gonna be a highly debated topic. I think if you can live with the sacrifices and want a tiny iPhone with a lot of power, then I think this is not a bad choice. But I think for $400 to $500, you can definitely do better. So if you're looking for a budget phone that's not an iPhone, I think you're much better off with something like a Blue Vivo 5 or an Honor 5X because it costs half the price and it does about the same thing. Or if you want an iPhone, I say go ahead and buy the iPhone 5S on a prepaid carrier. I paid $200 for it and I don't think there's enough differences here besides the power to warrant that four to $500 price tag. All right, that about does it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up if you did. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Follow me on Twitter at SuperScientific and let me know if you agree or disagree. And I'll see you guys in the next video.